Hello there, people! Um, this is mostly going to be kind of like a historical video just to kind of cover a lot of different software and whatnot. Um, that was coming out near December of 1990 is that. The biggest problem with all of the software is that, like, none of it can we really bother with. Um, uh, so yeah, don't really expect to see too, too much footage. It's really, like, I, I can't really play any of them for different reasons. I'll get into why we can't do any of them. Um, so first and foremost, we should talk about V-Quake, which started on December 2nd of 1996. Um, V-Quake was for the very right chipset, um, which was a uh, certain type of chipset that was in the late 90s, and... It basically wrote to it like a very different way from every other type. Um, but basically think like integrated graphics or something like that. That that, that sounds to be like the best way to describe it. Um, but the problem with it is because the fact that matter that it's outdated and nobody really used it and it kind of got completely forgotten, it hasn't been emulated at all. So, uh, pretty much, yeah, there's really no way to, like, play it in today's things at all, unless you've got a very right, um, chip. And very right chips haven't really been sold since the 90s. So, yeah. Um, as far as I can figure, it sounds like the V-Quake was basically the precursor to GL Quake. Um, it sounds like it was a simpler version of it, and it sounds like it wasn't as optimized as Geoquake was. Like, the big thing about Geoquake was that it ran so fast and smooth in comparison to, like, the DOS versions that were extremely laggy, as we have been seeing. Um, VQuake still had some of these optimization issues. Pretty much the big thing about VQuake was that it was um, this chipset thing trying to basically cash in, probably, on the fact that, Mary, that, like, we have the first hardware-accelerated version of Quake on the market, and uh, yet they're pretty obscure of who they are. So, needless to say, it was just kind of thing that was there. But it definitely wasn't, like, the most interesting of versions. You know, for a thing that was supposed to be, like, going on or whatnot, you don't even, like, see Carmack mention it in his old documents or anything. So, that's pretty weird. Um, beyond that, we also have, um, some different things going on at the time for just randomness. We've had source code releases. We've had, um... We had, like, a, a Linux distribution that's totally useless for us because we're on Windows. Um, and also, here's the big one, and the one that I kind of want to focus on today. We've also gotten Quake World. Um, I kind of was talking about Quake World last time, but yeah. Quake World was officially released on... Um, December 13th of 1997. That was when the server um, file was released. And the problem with it, and the client file, which was released on the 17th, um, is the fact of the matter that both basically are looking for id software's master server. It basically connects up to the master server and basically utilizes that. Um, I've used later versions of Quake World. It doesn't have a reliance on that master server anymore. So at some point, it sounds like they allowed you to create your own servers, and you basically could do whatever. This version doesn't seem like I can do that. I've tried changing, like, the master IP. It doesn't recognize anything besides an id software or existing IP. Um, so, yeah, right now, it's basically that, basically, at this time, it's still the old-school, old-school model. Um, like I said, this is the 
which you call it the Quake World server and Quake World client. Um, one two one seven one two one uh, three. Basically, it's based on the date. Um, that it came out. And, yeah, like I said, the problem with it is the fact that, Mara, that the server and the client are both looking for that master server. And because it's looking for a master server that has been dead for ages, that means we can't really do anything. Like, I can load it up, but it basically gives me an error message two seconds into it, and we don't get any playability whatsoever. Um, and I don't get, like, a nice, pretty GUI. No, it's just basically a command line interface, like your regular default Windows command line interface. Um, interestingly enough, I can actually run all this software from Windows. I do not need the, um, to use DOS spots, like, everything before it. But the fact of the matter is, like I've been saying, you really can't do much with it. It's pretty much kind of just there, like I said, because the fact of error, the reliance to the master server, because when this it came out, historically, its software was still in the mindset of we wanted to have basically all of this data being collected um, as a way of, no, uh, you know, basically giving customized stats and saying, we want you to, if you, you know, kill a bunch of noobs it'd be saying uh, that you've killed all these noobs and this and that and the other thing really they wanted to like have a lot of management over it and have like a lot going on and so this is when it was really involved with Carmack um later on in the cycle it really kind of its software stopped focusing on it and so I'm assuming at that point that didn't really make sense to connect it to a master server anymore. And so people were able to start creating their own servers. Um, but for the time being, you can only really rely on them. And so because of that, we don't really get anywhere. It it pretty much is totally useless. Like, um, honestly, trying to get the client 1217 file took quite a bit of effort. I had to, like, dig, like, old sh um old school shareware files or so, like, dig through, like, old archive CDs to try and find this thing. Um, it was not an easy find. And honestly, it it's not really worth it. I, I wouldn't advise you guys to go out and hunt for it because, like I said, you cannot connect to it. The m most valuable thing you'll get in there is the README because you cannot do anything with the actual files. Um, I did get some WAV files, interestingly enough. Um, yeah, like, I got this one right here. Welcome to Quake World. Welcome to Quake World. Yeah, I have found loops, so don't mind that. It's done! 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 It's done! And we have this one. It is a good day to die. So, yeah, th those are, like, three Wii files that were included with the original version of the game for whatever reason. But it's there, it's kind of a thing. Um, also, all of that is connected to, um, not to just Quake World, but another application that was big at the time, that, if you knew what you were talking about. Um, basically, Quake Spy. Quake Spy is pretty much the way to connect up to people, because um, if you remember the original Quake, you had quite a few different ways to connect up, but if you had internet, the whole idea behind it was that you basically would have to look online, find the IP address, type that in, um, get the port, type that in, and hopefully you could connect. Um, probably not, because there's a lot of issues. This makes it a lot simpler. Um, Quake Spy. It basically has like a nice convenient GUI which allows you to get any server that you want and it allows for great connections. It, it, it was a very, very popular program um, back in 96. Uh, um, and yeah, it was a pretty big deal to get this thing to make it a lot easier to connect to Quake servers. Um, and this thing actually became so popular that it really started taking off more and more. 
you see, Crazy Spy eventually kind of went along and eventually became Game Spy, um, which you guys may recognize as being a heavy multiplayer based thing in a lot of games. Yes, this thing be uh, you know started in Quake, but went on to become a very very powerful thing indeed. And yeah, it basically took off all because of Quake World. Um, and yeah, originally it was just a piece of software kind of bundled with Quake at the time. That was made by I think other people, but tied together. And like I said, you know, it had like official support for mid software or whatnot, and was basically. I remember in, like, the Wii versions, I think it's, like, you know, that's how it looks for servers or something like that. But, yeah, right now, we can't do much of anything with that. So, yeah, um, I, I know the later versions, I can definitely do stuff for Quake World. You can't really do anything here. The most you can do is kind of look at um, the different files and just see what the files were. That, that's about it. Um, and I can, of course, talk about what exactly, like, Quake World's about, and things like that. Um, so do note that Quake World is totally unsupported by id Software. Um, it was th a project made by Carmack, but yeah, he basically unsupported that. Um... So we have a lot of different stuff going on here. We have the QWCL, that's basically the front-end client. You have QWSV, that's basically your server file. Um, and that's pretty much about it. <laughs> well, I made it sound a lot more complicated than it was. Um, like I said, the whole problem is that the whole reliance on the master server means that we can't really do anything. But normally you'd create like an account and then you'd be able to connect up to the master server. So, okay then. Um, also an interesting thing is the fact that, matter that we have like a skins directory so that way it would like automatically download skins. Um, a, a bit very interesting thing about the original Quake was the fact that it mattered that with skins... It really didn't have a like, good custom skin support. It basically was that I'm not even sure if it actually worked with skins or not. Um, if it did, I don't think it works. Like if someone has like a custom skin or something, I don't think you see it or something. I forget exactly how they did it, but it definitely didn't really have a like, good support. Um, so let's see here. The uh, by default, the main commands you'd be using would be like master, which would connect to like the master server or the alternate master server. Um, basically, Quake World server will uh, you know could try to connect to its master server at one nine two two four six four zero one one five. Um, should there be another master server you wish your server to connect to? You can change it to whatever, but of course, you kind of need to have a master server. Okay, you can also specify an alternate port to listen to, besides the default of 2700. And you can also run um, game to specify the directory to an alternate progs file or map files. Um, kind of like anything else in regular one. So, yeah, there's a lot of different things that you can use, like, different commands. Like, you can ch change the map. You can set the password for remote administration. Um, you can say your status. You can show packets that you do. Um, see a lot of different stuff about your info. Um, you can toggle if it changes levels when someone exits or how exactly you want it to work. Um, you have a lot of different stuff for security, a lot more than, like, previous versions. Um, basically, you can add and remove people from the ban list. Yeah, it really is that you can have, like, a lot more control over the server than previous versions. That's the big thing. The Quake World Master Server, for all intents and purposes, is the central database controller for Quake World servers. The Quake World network architecture does not allow for straight client-to-server initial connections. 
All initial connections must first be made to a master server. From there, the client may log in, request a list of servers, change their user records, or join a game in progress on the available server. The master is in charge of keeping track of all stats, user records, and logs significant events from servers connected to it. Um, like I said, the biggest problem with master servers is that you kind of had to, like, get something from id software. They basically the ones who would, like, give it out. Yeah. So, yeah, the big thing about this is the whole logging feature. The fact of the matter that it will basically log all this different information. Um, it'll automatically keep track of every single user's frag and death, as well as their ranking and skill level. The whole focus was basically to keep, like, a master list and say who was the best player. And that was basically the big thing, was that you'd basically get that. Um, I don't see anything about monetization. So, I guess Carmack's plan to try and monetize the game didn't really go through, because he didn't think he could cash in on it like he originally thought maybe it would work. Um, network-wide bans. If there are rogue servers or users who consistently cause problems for users in the Quake World network, we now have the ability to prevent them from connecting to the network from a central location. Because of the whole master server, they basically can shut you off entirely. Um, there should be multiple complaints before a user IP mask is banned from Quake World. Um, Quake World now also has the ability to request information where a particular username or user ID was last seen doing. Um, Quake World, it basically sounds like a lot of telemetry stuff, doesn't it? Um, Quake World has the ability to password prevent key value combos with a password. Um... Yeah, if you want to prevent like people from using your skins or something, the Quake World admins can pr password protect your with the password. You may or set your skin to this value if you only provide the correct password. To prevent people from masquerading as another user, Quake World only accepts one unique name per master. That way, there can only ever be one. A person, um, per that master. Should there be a problem with someone stealing another person's well-known name, please email the administrators to have the user records fixed. So, yeah. Like I said, that's pretty much the whole big thing, is that, like, uh, that's, like, a lot of different stuff going on for Quake World and whatnot. But really, nothing we can kind of really bother with. That's kind of the depressing part of all this. Um, you can also send, like, messages to, like, the server or something. Um, like, say, uh, when exactly things are going down or whatnot. Um, basically, this is the... Re now I'm talking about the revision for December 16th of 1990 sets. Which, yeah, you know, uh, now allows you to say, like, if the server's going down... Um, shows a bit more information about, like, the server or whatever. Shows different ranks of users. Um. And, yeah, pretty much that's about it. Yeah, that seems to be about it all for all that. A lot of craziness. Not really much to care about, honestly. Let's see. Uh, Quake World is a Win32 app, and it'll run on either Win95 or Windows NT. Take advantage of whatever enhanced video and sound capabilities are present. It has fallback functionality, so it can uh, run on any Win32 system. Um. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of problems and workarounds. So if, like, you have a lot of issues. Um, it's basically just a massive troubleshooting guide because this was the first version that really worked with Windows. Um, beyond that, very right, that very, very few people have. Um...
Then we also have the Quake World Client and Quake World Front End. Quake World Front End is really just Quake Spy. Um, really, the Quake World Client, it sounds like it pretty much has the things that the regular one. Um, the Quake World menu structure has changed slightly in comparison to DOS Quake 1.06. The first thing you'll notice is that the single player and multiplayer menu options do not work. Quake World is an internet only implementation of Quake. Um, under options, video options will allow you to toggle between full screen and windowed modes of play. If you run Quake World in a window, you'll notice that a new option appears under the options menu. That being use mouse, which allows you to toggle whether or not you're able to use a mouse in a windowed mode play. So, yeah, it basically is pretty much like regular Quake, but with a few extra bonuses, as you see. Um, and then we have Quake Spy, um, with some Quake World enhancements. Basically, Quake Spy existed before Quake World, um, but... Good luck trying to find those old Quake Spy files, and just like um, this one, it's not going to work, especially since um, earlier this year, was it last year, um, Quake, um, GameSpy shut down fully, so any games that you've had that like were supported by GameSpy no longer work. So, yeah, Quake Spy is totally useless now. We, we can't use it. So, yeah, one more thing that we can't really touch. Ain't that brilliant. Um. Anyway, like said, um, it requires you to be connected to the internet. Um, you have, like, a lot of login dialogue. Like I said, a lot of different stuff that, um, monitors what you're doing. Yeah, like I said, really, it's kind of the common themes here. Um, uh, I keep kind of beating the same tune, but that's kind of what's really going on here. It's the fact that Mera that it's um really just the same things for Quake World. It's pretty much a uh, exclusive internet online play thing that basically logs you. Um, and like I said, there's a bunch of different things that are kind of going on here, like um. I believe Kymac was also focused on getting rid of, like, the ability to, like, look up and down staircases, like, right away, because it was, like, a very buggy code, and everyone kind of used mouse look anyway by this point. So, yeah. Um, like I said, you know, he, uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on or whatever, but, <laughs> um, there was also the whole fact that Merit that it's, you know, very, very dis different in how it's designed. Like, the big focus on Quake World and it, why exactly it was made is because the Quake client itself didn't exactly work too well. It was basically designed for people with, like, high-class ISP, um, high-class things without ISPs instead of the general user with an ISP. Well, the Quake World was basically designed to actually work for pretty much everyone else and pretty much for that. Basically, it's a prediction-based um, design that basically runs, in, like, it tries to take the last few frames um, and tries to use that. And so it basically tries to use that in the master server to basically determine where your last position was. And so we get prediction-based movement. Um, we get all different stuff like that that basically allows us for a smoother multiplayer experience in comparison to the original Quake. Um, it's basically a totally rewritten code, which is why it was basically pulled together like this, is to just improve the regular Quake. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of different things, you know. It basically cut down massively on the latency. Um... It took a long time as it would basically fit in a lot of issues. Like, you get stuck in, like, platforms. There was a lot of different weird things going on. Um, but, yeah. It, it, you know, Quake World was released in December of 1996. Which sounds pretty awesome. It's a fair fact of matter that I don't really have anyone to play with in the first place. And then, to add insult to injury, you can't really play Quake World... Um, the original version anyway, because it requires connection to id software's master server. 
And sadly, id Software does not have their master server up after 20 years. Seriously, what happened to supporting your products? <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, you know, shouldn't after 20 years I like, still be able to connect to a uh, thing that nobody else touches anymore? Like, seriously. Anyway, um, that's about that. Um, like I said, <laughs> pretty boring probably to be just listening to me talking to black screen. Since really we couldn't do anything. But I figured since because there was so much stuff picking up and there was like all this different official id software stuff, especially Quake World itself, I decided I'd make a little thing just to kind of cover all the other little stuff that's been kind of going on with id software, aka all the stuff we cannot touch. So basically, the lesson here is that the only thing we really could touch at the time was the official um, Quake stuff itself, like. Up to 1.06. And all the other side stuff, which sounds awesome, we really can't touch at this point. Because it's really kind of made for certain directions. Or it's made to um, require our connections to id Software's office. Either way, we really can't do it. In any event, any event, thank you very much all for watching. I shall see you all next time.